The uh, Rules Committee will come to order. We're here for an original jurisdiction markup on uh, H.R. 3521, the expedited line item veto and rescissions act of 2011. And uh, let's see, the committee is meeting to consider these measures. And uh, the chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Grandfather Community for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the committee report the bill, H.R. 3521, to the House with a favorable recommendation. Without objection, the bill is considered as having been read. The chair recognizes himself for the purpose of offering an amendment. And without objection, the amendment is considered as read. The chair will briefly explain the amendment, which was already explained to be my slaughter, I have to say. Uh, this amendment simply updates the fast-track procedures in the introduced bill to reflect the current practice of both the House and Senate. All of these procedures have been used in other fast-track legislation and should not be controversial. Um, are there further amendments to the amendment? If not, without objection, the previous... Oh, excuse me. I, I will comment on it. Okay, absolutely. Well, is this the, is this the appropriate time for the distinguished ranking member to comment, or do we... I don't have an amendment, Is it you? I want to comment on, on Okay, this. so I'm happy to recognize this. Thank you. Uh, you know, this legislation has both supporters and opponents and both sides of the aisle and has ever since right. I've been in Congress. And there's an honest disagreement, I think, about it. Uh, I, for one, am very skeptical, and I think we should always be cautious when addressing the constitutional prerogatives of the legislative branch when it comes to the power of the purse. But regardless of one's position on the underlying legislation, I appreciate the fact that the manager's amendment asserts the proper role of the Rules Committee when it comes to House procedures. Our Democrats and Republicans work together in a bipartisan fashion on the manager's amendment. We have no objection to it and are pleased to support it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, appreciate that. And, um, Without objection, the previous question is ordered on the amendment. And the question occurs on adoption of the amendment. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. Uh -huh. Chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. And the amendment is agreed to. Is there further discussion uh, of or amendments to the bill? If not, oh, Mr. Hastings. Very briefly, am I correct that the president already has rescission power? Yes. Well, I know that the rescission authority does exist uh, for the president. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's not, not under the expedited procedures, which is what this measure... Yeah, my recollection is the only time that it was utilized, uh, at least in my memory, uh, here uh, was uh, uh, President Clinton. My other question is, lots of states have this power, and it does appear that there hasn't been any real evidence that it is uh, useful in the sense of uh, cutting back on wasteful spending. And a second part of that is, is there a concern about potential abuse uh, by the executive authority? And therein lies a part of what I feel uh, needs to be seriously addressed. I have, as have you and others that are here, seen the House of Representatives and the Senate allow or uh, for enhanced executive authority in a variety of uh, uh, areas. And more and more, I become uh, concerned uh, in the intelligence of uh, our community that there were things uh, that we put in the hands of a president uh, that I thought that should not have been. And we have some responsibilities, and I just personally do not like us not discharging our responsibility, Mr. Chairman. So those two questions are... Well, I, uh, I, I appreciate that, and I think it was said best by the ranking member when she pointed to the fact that there uh, are some people who are supportive and some people who have, um, have opposed this measure. Obviously, with the, the numbers that have come out today on the level of the annual deficit, fourth year in a row that we're seeing deficits in excess of a trillion dollars, this is underscored the imperative to try and look at ways to uh, to deal with this issue. And I think that, you know, this is this is uh, not a first choice for a lot of people, um, but I think that it's something that um, 
is coming about because of uh, the hue and cry that is out there on this issue. Happy to yield. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I had one thing. In um, mine and Mr. Nugent's and Mr. Webster's uh, our state, um, governors use this power, but you know what I've seen them do is basically what they do is the legislators pass something, and if they don't like the particular um, uh, earmark, let's call it, that the legislators pass, they just substitute their own uh, earmark for it. If it but rather than the bridge being on the left side of the river, they make it be on the right side of the river. And I just, uh, for the life of me, don't think that uh, we ought give presidents power uh, that I believe are inherent in our Congress, although the Supreme Court has made one ruling, as you know, with reference to this, but this matter, I think, uh, doesn't address that particular constitutional provision, but I assure you it's going to lead to litigation. Well, it's a very fair point, and I, I suspect that the possibility of litigation, as has always been the case as it relates to the item veto, will be there, and I think that uh, by virtue of our uh, proceeding, we're going to have uh, an interesting and rigorous discussion on it. Mr. Chairman? Uh, gentleman from uh, Georgia, Mr. Woodall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I it just makes me feel so good to start my week out with a bipartisan uh, manager's amendment and then hearing what Mr. Hastings uh, said. You know, we're in a kind of a limited uh, time period uh, here. After an election in November, uh, those questions of legislative authority versus executive authority begin to, uh, to get a little hazier with uh, uh, partisan rhetoric because someone's got four more years to, to yield that. You know who you trust and, and who you don't. I would uh, welcome the opportunity to work with you over the next uh, 11 months uh, to see what we can do to reclaim those fibers of, of legislative uh, branch authority that have been delegated uh, by far too many uh, Congresses, both Republican uh, and Democrat. Uh, and I think that's something that the American people, again, all, every, every fiber of uh, power we bring back to the legislative branch, it's bringing it back to the American uh, people, irrespective of their political views. And I, I would look forward to working with you on that. And I thank, thank you, thank you very much. Without objection, the previous question is ordered on the bill, and the question occurs on the motion to report the bill to the House's amendment with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor will say aye. Those aye. opposed, no. Pay the chair the uh, ayes have it, and the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. And uh, let me say again, as I did last week, that the minority clearly has uh, its right to offer uh, views that uh, may be in opposition. That's a right that exists, and we will continue that. Um, our schedule for the week. Uh, we meet we're meeting tomorrow to, uh, to budget at, uh, 3 at 3 p.m. Uh, without objection, the staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes to all matters ordered reported by the committee today. The chair is authorized to make such motions as may be necessary to go to conference with the Senate on H.R. 3521 or other similar measures. Thank you all very much, and uh, we'll look forward to a great meeting tomorrow. Without objection, the committee stands adjourned.